Espresso coffee tastes mighty good. That's not the reason why I gotta get back up to that sugar shack. All right, here we are, the final part. <laughs> oh, jeez, been a long road here. I got it all in. I reduced it down to two tracks on the pass-through because I was having some issues with the third line. So I'm going to have to buy a, a curved turnout, maybe, or I might put another turnout down there. So basically we're going down from two to one, back from one from back up to two, if that makes any sense. But I think that's the best way to do this. Uh, it took a lot of work to get this thing to work out right. I'll give you a closer view of it. So, but, I've already pre-tested a couple of locos on it. There are no derailments, and I'm going to demonstrate that in a second. They go both forward and backward the, the whole way through. I think we may have actually done it this time. So, let me go ahead and start it up. And see what happens. Speed step 20. As soon as they're ready, it'll start coming. And we crossed the path through with one. Then the other. I'm going to back them up. That's the real trick, and I got to go both ways, forward and backward, not derail them. <laughs> and there goes the first one over. There goes the second one. There goes over that one. And there we go. Yay! So there you have it. A successful test run of my new pass-through. And it does actually work. Got my feeders up here. Don't worry, there you go. Swing it back down. Locks in, alignment's good everywhere. And you see there's not too much of a gap between the tracks, which is excellent. And over here, remember I said I was going to overlap. That's kind of what I did. I don't know how, how good the focus is on this camera. But, anyway, that's the way it worked out. So it worked out pretty good. I'm happy with it. And right now, that's about all you can say. <laughs> so, let me turn the camera around and wrap this up. Alrighty, so that was the successful test run fina finality. <laughs> There's a word. Ah, can't, can't talk. Now let me start over again. Okay, so that was the final installment of the tilt up pass through and test run. There, Pogo. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> 
And my crazy dog wants to be part of the camera action as usual. <laughs> oh, big a silly dog. So, uh, anyway, that was a, uh, a tough job. I, I didn't really enjoy doing it, not as much as I probably should have. I mean, it was a challenge, and of course challenges are good, even if they are a little aggravating. <laughs> But hey, you know, got to be done. There, there was no way around it. If I wanted to be able to go completely around the, the layout, I had to have a pass-through. Uh, I guess that would have been... If I, oh, excuse me. If I had done end scale, this wouldn't have been an issue because I would have had enough bench work. I could have brought out a little bit on this end. But I, I can't do end scale. I'm just, you know, sausage fingers. Half wine? No, not a good thing. Uh, but anyway, so I hope this helps anybody who was planning on doing such a thing. I said I think there's really only two good ways to do this. And that's either a tip up or a, a, a roll out or swing out. The swing out's fine, but it's got to be self supporting. You can't have that wheel on the ground. And that's something I never even, my wildest dreams would have, what I would imagine that would have been a problem. I just didn't see it, you know. And like I said, most train rooms are not sterile environments. It'd be nice if they were, but it's an impossibility. There's always dust, stuff you're going to track in on your feet. You know, if you have pets, you've got dander. There's just everything. And eventually, it's going to build up enough on that wheel, it's going to start vertically raising that end of the, uh, the, the, slot, the, pin, the slide out. At least it did for me anyway. Maybe it won't for everybody, but I think it, it's something, it's a serious issue one needs to look at. Like I said, if it's self-supporting, and looking back at it, I probably could have done that. You know, like I said, I, I went a little bit crazy with the the weight, the width, and the length of it. If I would have shortened it and made it only, like I said, I got this as 10 inches wide, and, and realistically, I could have probably went down to 8 inches wide. And I could have swung it out with no issues whatsoever, and it would have been self-supporting. I mean, it's too late now, I'm not going to worry about it. Of course, once again, when you do that, you have to have an angle on the non-hinge side, or uh, like a, a partial circle, a radius, because you're sliding out of it. So I guess the easiest way to do it would be to have an angle. But I, I just didn't want to get in the middle of it. I just figured, you know what, this is so much easier just to do a flip up and be done with it. So I did it. Um, like I said, I did have problems with the third, third track. Which is sort of my fault. I should have made this a little bit wider. Instead of going 10, I should have went 12. Because I had some clearance problems with the track. Being too close to the hinge on, on, the, on the inside. So, but that's fine. The two track is, is fine. And I'll pick it up where I can cross over a little bit on the right hand side. So I'll still get to utilize most of my track that's down. It's not an issue. And then over here on the left, instead of having to come all the way around, I'm going to use that as a siding, that third track. So and that's good because you, you, can, you can never have enough sidings anyway, you know. And I really don't have that many. I've only got, what, one, one siding there. I've only got three sidings and two of them are short. So... The fourth one will come in handy, you know. Uh, so anyway, that's that's the good news. It's operational. Most of my feeders are in on the bottom level. I think I got one set of feeders to go down on the right hand corner. I still got to get my turnout switches activated. They're installed. I just got to get power to them, and uh, they'll be operational. At least two of them, anyway. And that's a, that's a job that I'm just going to take my time on. I'm not in a big hurry. I've still got more crossing 
signals to put in. I've got the one operational on the right hand side of the track uh, of bench work. I've got to do one, two, three more on the left side, one in the back, and possibly one on the on the right corner. I'm not sure yet. I might just opt for signs on that one. Depends. I bought extra uh, Arduino boards. I've got three extra, so and I've got a ton of sensors. Matter of fact, if any of you guys need a sensor, let me know. I'll sell them to you for what I paid for them. They're brand new. And I think I got. Actually, I got 20 of them for $18, so they're less than a dollar a piece. So, that's a good deal. But anyway, getting back, I'm getting off subject here. So, if, uh, if anybody's going to tackle one of these pass-throughs, be forewarned. It's not going to be fun. <laughs> or maybe it will, I don't know. For me, not so much. I think it's one of the worst things I had to do. One well, of the worst jobs I had to do in the train room. You know, I mean, it's just, the rest of the stuff is much easier. Um, wiring's not that big of a deal. It's time consuming, but it's not a big deal. Playing track is easy. Scenery is much, much easier. So, but now I'm glad this is done and actually have a functional track, a functional layout where I can actually run the track all the way through. I'm going to have to run the track cleaning car around it quite a bit because it's been, it's been like four or five months since I put the track down. I probably haven't run any trains on it. So, got a lot of dirty spots on the track. It's going to have to, it's going to need a good cleaning. Uh, and hopefully we start looking at scenery pretty soon. I still got to pour my lakes. I've got two lakes to pour and a small pond. So, and I've got the stuff to do it, I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm not in a hurry on any of this stuff. But, you know, right, as I get older, I'm learning to take my time with a lot of things. And that's a good thing. And hopefully, I live long enough to finish this thing, you know, because it, it may take 10 years. <laughs> Hell no. And there's still a lot of cosmetic stuff I want to do on the, you know, for the, uh, the skirting on the outside, but I'll get to it. So, um, I could bore you to death and keep talking, but I'm not going to. So, as always, keep it on the rails. Thank you for watching. I hope this is helpful to anybody that's going to undertake such a thing. You might want to try and keep the length down to, the, to a minimum. Mine is 42 inches long. Uh, you're better to stay at 36 or less, you know. It just makes things easier. And make sure to keep everything light, as light as possible. Re sturdy and rigid, but light. Yeah, that's about it. Have fun. And uh, much success to whoever, whoever jumps into this. So, uh... Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye.